Good morning, my name is Mark and I'm going to bring, bring a reflection this morning on part of the book of Joel, particularly Joel chapter 2 verses 12 to 14. But I think it's important to give a bit of context to the book of Joel. It's quite a short book, only a few chapters. And the early part of the book is a very, very stern warning to Israel that the Lord is going to bring devastation upon them because they've neglected him and rejected him and that there's a lot of trouble coming over the horizon and they're going to be taken over. And it doesn't finish there though, it moves on and the last part of the book is about the blessings that God will then bestow and those blessings are conditional on the pivot point of the book, which I think is in chapter two. And to read these verses, it says, Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. And there is the invitation to Israel to repent of what they've been doing to turn back to God and turn their hearts again to him and it's a very very deep repentance that the Lord is after from them not tearing of garments which was used as a sign of repentance it was a bit of show if you like it's a little bit like that bit in the Old Testament where Jesus warns us against mimicking those who stand on the street corners or in public praying loudly but looking on the inside as it says here rend your hearts and not your garments because that is what God is looking for it is our hearts that concern him what is our concern for ourselves before him how do we place ourselves place our lives in his hands because if we place our, our lives and ourselves in his hands then he will pour out blessing and perhaps the better known part of chapter 2 where it says in verses 28 and 29 and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh <clears throat> your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, even upon your men servants and your maid servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit. Such a change from the early part where God is warning Israel against what they have become and what they've been doing, and this is the promise of God to reach back to them. This isn't about now what Israel will do, it is about what God will do. He will pour out blessing. It's not restrained, it's not a little bit of blessing here and there, it's pouring out the blessing upon Israel, upon all flesh. And isn't that an interesting point, that it's changed, it's not just Israel, it is upon all flesh and this is understood by biblical scholars that this refers to where we are at now this is the whole world can be in a place thanks to the death and resurrection of Jesus where we can all receive the blessing of God so if we place ourselves in his hands if we allow him to bless us, allow him to be Lord of our lives, 
then this is where the focus needs to be. And this is by putting our hearts back into a right relationship with God through his spirit that we can place ourselves where he can bless us as he wishes and chooses to do. <clears throat> and if we want a song to go with this, it doesn't quite match up, but it's one that seems right for the circumstances where we're thinking about the Lord wanting to bless us. <laughs> um, it's the one that starts off with be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. <laughs> 